Hi folks, welcome to my brand new tutorial video about EU TV. This is going to be more about different strategy and tactics rather than the basics. Please note that EU TV is developed continuously, so some of the info might be outdated. For more information please visit eudv.net. Let's start with a few basic info. Two team fights to control all the sectors. Each faction has its own headquarter. This is a safe area, no enemies are allowed to get inside and it's better to avoid by planes or helicopters too because the unforgiving self-defense mechanism. The center of the HQ area is marked by this green military tower. You can purchase all the equipment needed on the battlefield here. As a side note, a limited set of vehicles and ammo available at the controlled sectors too, but on a higher price. Use this medical container to heal yourself. Showcase of the friendly and enemy uniforms. Check it to reduce the friendly fire and swearing from your teammates. This is the container to store non-use stuff. Good to know that items put here won't disappear, but others can pick up. Last but not least, the fast travel flag. Fast travel makes possible to travel between HQ and the outskirts of the capture sectors, where the capture point at least 75. Travel is instant and the cooldown period is 1 minute. You can travel to Mobile Headquarter MHQ or Mobile Insertion Point MIP from the flag also. Each team get 2 MHQ for free which respawns at the HQ automatically if get destroyed. Contrary, the MIP has to be purchased by the players and it get lost if destroyed like any other vehicle. MHQ is always a cover truck without any marker on the side. Learn to recognize. It's very important to report if you spot the enemy MHQ, but don't mix up with the normal truck. As a tomb of rule, place the MHQ free 400 meters from the target sector, but it's really not a hard rule. Moving the MHQ to the right spot and hunting for the enemy MHQ probably the most important game element. Somebody with good knowledge of the terrain and hiding spots can keep the MHQ alive for a long time. On the other side, those who are hunting for the MHQ try to find out where is the enemy forces are coming from and that will help to locate enemy MHQ. Later phase they can use helicopter or drone to locate. Let's see a typical scenario right after the beginning of the round. All players start at the HQ as mentioned earlier. Red team controlling sector number 1 and number 2. Sector number 3 is the only which can be attacked because it has connection to friendly sector only. The brown color means that the area is scouted, but under the control of the independent faction. Independent faction is controlled by the AI and has importance only at the beginning of the battle. By default, they are controlling all sectors, which are not controlled by the other two teams. Sector number 4 and number 5, marked with black color, is currently unscouted and could be either under the control of the blue side or the independent faction. Now the table is set. Both team moves out the MHQ and using that for fast travel, or fast travel to a controlled area and buying vehicles to travel on road to the target sector. As the battle progressed, red team took over sector number 3 and opened the possibility to attack two sectors now. Blue team controlling now sector number 5, but some of the red forces are there as it reduced from 100 to 80 points already. Here I would like to mention this scenario is not from a real server, but an example which I created for demonstration purpose only. EU TV servers hosting many scenarios and this opened the possibility to use different tactics depending on the map. Variety increased further by having different time and weather settings too. To capture a sector you have to move inside a circle. Staying outside and camping is for the snipers. Of course it's not a hard rule. There are many reasons to stay outside, but the tumble rule, everybody get into the circle and snipers provide cover. Rate of the sector capture is depending how many friendly and enemy forces are inside this area. Here the red team capturing the sector by 2 and I am alone inside from the green team. Capture rate is 2 for the red team, however the situation will change soon. Here worth to mention that the maximum capture rate is limited to 5. Fast travel will be available only for that team who controls the sector and the number of controlling points is 75 or more.
This example shows how a balanced situation can turn into a nightmare very quickly. Concentrate on sector number 3 and 4. Both sector under 75, therefore no fast travel option available, so you have to use another transport method to get there. Sector number 3 is under attack by the blue side and capturing it by 1 point. Red team has only 5 points remaining and that means after 5 ticks the area will be taken over by the blue side if nothing happens. Sector number 4 is under attack by the red side and capturing it by 5 points, which is the maximum rate. Right now the situation doesn't look bad. However, the blue side has 60 points remaining and that means sector number 3 will be taken over earlier, and number 4 will be cut off and after it cannot be captured anymore by the red team. The red team lost its initiative and get into a pretty bad situation. Let me explain why. Sector number 4 has a lot of forces. Remember, it was taken by 5 points earlier. Those forces are stuck there. Transport vehicles most probably a few hundred meters from the sector, if not yet even destroyed. Besides, there is no road to sector number 3 but hills. Walking there is out of the question because of the distance and the terrain. No good solution here. Best to use the dirt method. Select the respawn and move from the HQ to defend number 2 which will be under attack very soon, for sure. Blue side now can relocate all defending forces to number 3 and build up an attack from there. From the captured sector, the next target is reachable easily. There is a road nearby and the distance is quite close too. How to avoid such situation? Red side should recognize much earlier the risk of losing connection to an attack area and put more effort on defense. Now, the red team controls nearly the whole map. However, they lost the fast travel possibility to number 4, 5 and 6 and that gives the chance to the blue team to regain the initiative. Let's assume there is no MHQ or MIP for the blue team nearby, but both number 7 and the HQ is very close to sector 6. Reasonable not to wait, but purchase vehicles and rush the sector number 6. However, if the red team does not have MHQ nearby, their situation is much more difficult. In such case, it's a good option to use helicopter or parachute insertion, but I want to underline that overusing helicopters is really a bad idea and could lead to defeat. It simply takes a lot of time and risk, even it looks cool to travel and land as a part of the special forces. The endgame of the battle starts when all sectors, except one, are controlled by one of the factions. After a certain time, the last sector gets the sudden death marker, which means the friendly forces cannot regain the control, but steadily losing it by one point. It doesn't matter how many friendly or enemy forces are inside, the controlling points will go down by one at least. To stop the sudden death, the team must attack and capture another zone. Other case, the round is lost and time to prepare for the next round. Last, I would like to talk about helicopter insertion when it is good to use and when it is not. Rule is simple. Use fast travel much as possible. Must be a good reason to use different travel method. Helicopter insertion can be good to open a second front, scout in the area or set up an ambush. Helicopters are good to finding an enemy MHQ or destroying a well-covered tank or APC. There are many other reasons to use helicopter, but not for normal insertion. That's all for now. I'm ending this video by its title, know your strategy, listen to the experienced players, communicate, reduce friendly kills and I promise playing on EU TV will be fun. Don't worry if you are not the sharpest shooter, players are friendly and admins kicks the ass of the cheaters. If you like this video please subscribe below, if hated still subscribe, maybe the next one will be better. Cheers and have fun.